Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh! I am ready for my next interview, though. I cannot wait to talk to her. She's, um, I've got Wonder Woman up there. I've mm. got Olivia Newton-John and Gretchen Carlson. And she's sitting here right now. Mondays, uh, Monday night at 8 o'clock on Lifetime, you guys. Breaking the Silence is the first part of a three docuseries special to air on um, uh, A&E. Hi, Gretchen. How are you? Hey, Jenny. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, Lifetime TV, I'm so grateful for you to be uh, here to speaking out, representing this cause. Well, thank you. Because, I mean, I've been in the business 25 years. I started as a playmate. <laughs> so you can just imagine a playmate yep. trying to get into comedy. That was funny onto itself. And um, the stories I have go on and on and on. And I've been open and forthcoming since day one 25 years ago and it was like no one it was crickets right and you know better than anyone that that uh the probably the the shame and assault that you had to face because of your chosen career path that you just you deserved it right of course of course you deserved it because you were were beautiful and you were putting Mm -hmm. yourself out there and that's one of the big myths and so really what I wanted to do with this doc was was focus on the every woman story because I love yeah because listen nobody's ever listened to these women nobody no and uh you know a lot of this movement has been about well-known journalists and famous actresses and what I found out after my story broke at Fox two years ago was that this is a pervasive epidemic all across our country and it's affecting the every woman who's working fast food or you know being a waitress or in our military or a police officer or nighttime janitors yeah nighttime janitors i mean flight attendants uh i've heard from airplane mechanics who are female uh it's it's everywhere so i traveled the entire summer and part of the fall and went out and met all these women and and started to tell their stories and started to build trust with them and Three of the young women that I think are really heroic in the dock uh, are young women in their early 20s who work at McDonald's. And find that fascinating. Yeah, and they, you know, listen, some of them are supporting their entire extended mm. families on $15 an hour. Oh and when they go to work, they're also allegedly being harassed. And one woman also allegedly, after complaining about harassment and nothing was done, she was allegedly assaulted in the bathroom, oh. uh, attempted rape by a, a colleague at work. Uh, and she's 20. Mm. And, you know, who who's she going to go to complain to when she's bringing home the money for the entire family? Exactly. And were they still, let me ask, the, are they are these women still working there? She or no? is working at another McDonald's still in New Orleans. The other two uh, former McDonald's employees are not working at McDonald's. But I think what's really compelling about the doc, too, Jenny, is that not only do I share these women's stories for the first time, but then I go and get answers for them. Right. So, That's what I love that you go and you get people to try to <laughs> make a comment back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I'm jumping out of a lot of cars and saying, you know, <laughs> look, where are you and mm-hmm. why won't you respond? And and, you know, why didn't you take these complaints seriously? And so really the goal of the documentary is to show how pervasive this is and show these, you know, horrible, sad stories, but also show what we can do to fix this if companies want to pay attention and actually try to retain these female employees and save millions of dollars from all these ridiculous settlements and actually fix the problem while it's happening. Can it be fixed? Yes. No, I'm really optimistic about it. I really feel like we've come a, a really long way since my case happened just two and a half years ago, and we've seen significant change, even with the way in which we we treat women when they find the courage to come forward. It's not an automatic trashing. Right. Uh, we've seen uh, consequences more swiftly mm. for 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 perpetrators, uh, and and we've seen huge movements happen as a result of of one voice, but then a collective voice. Like, look at the Google walkout. You know that the, all those okay. employees around the world got together and said, "Our voice matters." And here's the important part: there were men. There were men who also walked out that right. day to support the women, and that is another huge part of my my discussion when I go across the country, is we need men to help us. For sure. We do. And I think the men, too, that are only just beyond compassionate, but there are brothers, there are husbands, yep. they have daughters, mm-hmm. you know, so they tend to be more empathetic, too. But we definitely need the guys on our side. We do because, well, first of all, uh, they're half the population. <laughs> uh, second of all, they still control the majority Everything. of companies out there, and they're making most of the hires. And so we need them to hire more women, put them in positions of power, pay them fairly, 
uh, promote them, put them in the boardroom. That's the first step. Because what, what ironically doesn't happen when you do that is sexual harassment. Because now you have more women in power and it doesn't happen. Uh, the second thing is that we need men to stop being bystanders and enablers when they know that this is happening at their companies. Right. I know how hard it is to come forward even for men. It takes almost the same amount of courage as, as the victim. But that's really the way that we could stop this really quickly is if men came forward and said, you know what, this is unacceptable. Yes, strength in numbers. Again, I'm talking to Gretchen Carlson, Breaking the Silence, Monday night at 8 o'clock on Lifetime. I think this is going to be huge. I want to give people a little bit more of a backstory for why you're um, Wonder Woman mm -hmm. to me and many other women. Uh, you did file a lawsuit against Roger Ailes at Fox News, which was huge. This happened only two years ago that you filed? Two and a half, July 6, 2016. And were you still working at the company then? Well, they had just fired me. Um, and then, For making a complaint? Uh, well, I can't get into all the details, unfortunately, okay. because of, of my settlement, which is a huge problem with why settlements are secret, which... Uh, it, this is another question it, I have. a whole other question, yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was two and a half years ago uh, that I filed my suit. You know, I, thank you for doing that, mm -hmm. because I think that... I mean, what a domino effect that did from um, Bill O'Reilly to Matt Lauer. I mean, it just opened the floodgates. Mm -hmm. When you saw people like Bill O'Reilly say, I will not trash my network, mm -hmm. I literally wanted to take the TV and throw it across the room. <laughs> what do you feel when you watch someone like that stand up for the network? Yeah, you know, when, when all these other stories started happening and there were more uh, men that were exposed, I it was really emotional for me, actually, because it just was surreal in the sense that maybe what I had done had led to that. You know, like, when, when I made the, the decision to come forward, I could have never known, Jenny, how this was all going to unfold. Right. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen the next minute or the next day. So the idea that more people would be held accountable after my story was really, really emotional for me. I mean, seeing Harvey Weinstein in handcuffs is mm. really emotional for me. Seeing Bill Cosby be convicted is really emotional for me. Um, and the same for, you know, any other well-known people. Absolutely. But, 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 but I don't want to lose sight of the fact that this is happening every day in every business with a lot of people who nobody knows who they are, Which right? is why you're doing this show, which yes. I love. Yes, because this is a pervasive epidemic. It's not just famous people. No. Although, we, we, you know, we pay, we've paid a lot of attention to these stories, rightfully so. But that's why I wanted to give the honor and the attention to these other I'm stories. so glad. And, the, and like you said, the positive that comes out of the celebrities and the journalists coming out is we are putting the spotlight on it mm -hmm. and the momentum right. and allowing these stories to now be heard. Um, let me plug it again. Gretchen, Gretchen Carlson, Breaking the Silence, Monday night, 8 o'clock on Lifetime. Um, Megyn Kelly, she also made a complaint, correct? She was a part of the investigation after I filed my lawsuit. That how uh, many of your um, friends, employ like coworkers, had called and said, "I support you"? <laughs> uh, less than on one hand. Why is that? I don't know. I think a lot of people were incredibly scared. You know, think back two and a half years. We weren't really talking about this, and um, uh, most of what was going on was trashing me. Uh, and that's fine. You know, I, you find out who your friends are. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the, the really great thing is I heard from some people that were in my life a long time ago that I hadn't talked to in 30 years. Wow. And then some people who I thought for sure I'd hear from, I didn't. But that's fine because you, you really, um, when you go through something this big, you, you really just cling to those who are most important to you. And that was my parents and my husband and my children. So... And, and was Megan one of them? Um, so, you know, I didn't really correspond with anyone at Fox after what I did. Oh, um, wow. That, like I said, there were less than a handful of people who had the courage to reach out to me and, and let me know that they were thinking about me. So these, these confidentiality, the NDAs that you have to sign after you get awarded payment, what, how do we change that? I know. It's a great question. So one of the things I've really been working on a lot over the last couple of years is introducing legislation to take arbitration clauses out of employment contracts, which is similar to settlements because that makes sure that if you go to file a complaint, it's secret. 
Mm. So arbitration is forced upon employees when they have a dispute like this. So they don't get a chance to go public if they want to. And so my bill that I introduced would give women and men the opportunity to make that decision on their own. <laughs> Standing ovation from the BFFs. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, and here's the thing. It was a bipartisan bill. Imagine that. Uh, so, you know, because sexual harassment is apolitical and both parties should be concerned about this. Uh, of course. And then there's the congressional secret court yep. that handles all the court cases uh, uh, quietly. I know, which I did another doc on for Norman Lear, actually, and his America Divided Hi, show. Yeah, which aired, um, which aired last fall. I spent, so I spent the year before this last one when I was doing this Lifetime doc working uh, on this doc for Norman Lear. And it was when all of that stuff was happening in Congress. And so they followed me as I introduced my bill. And then just by happenstance, the floodgates were, were you know, pouring open wow. on Capitol Hill. Yeah. So we captured all of that in the moment. But so arbitration clauses are, are a big problem for cases like this, because hypothetically, when you go to complain to HR, they like wipe their brow and they go, Phew, nobody will ever know about this. Right. Because it's oh secret. I know. And so now you go, now you're fired probably. You go to arbitration. You you have to, to put your case before retired judges and lawyers who are like over 70, right? So they may not even know what sexual harassment is. And you might get a paltry settlement, but the worst thing is you never work again and the perpetrator gets to stay on the job because nobody knows about it. It's maddening. It's maddening. Infuriating. And, and then how, you know, this is such a hot topic. Mm -hmm. We are talking about it, except you don't see it on mainstream television. I'm not sure how many shows mainstream television has to have booked you to promote this. I bet not nearly as many if it was, you know, some other topic. Well, how, how the question is network television is owned, you know, they're, they're, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're owned by, you know, big corporations. Yeah, so it's they such a great point, Jenny. It's, it's a great point because we, you know, because we take on McDonald's in the dock. Thanks. We take on McDonald's. And so, you know, shout out to Lifetime uh, for having the bravery to sure. allow me to do that. Um, you know, they also had the R. Kelly doc that just aired last right. week. Right. Yeah, Lifetime's coming it. through. Yeah, they're, right? on a, they're on a roll. Uh, but they're, uh, you know, I'll share with you that these exclusive interviews that I have with these McDonald's women, they shared their story with another TV entity and they chose not to air it. See, mm -hmm. that's what drives me freaking crazy. Yeah, but we but we are airing it. So, you know, we're taking a stand and, and we're being brave. And, and, and I hope that after people and companies watch this doc, that they'll do introspection and decide that instead of trying to continue to cover things up, that it's better to be open about it. I, I really want to know the answer to this question. As a journalist, like everyone grows up knowing somewhat what they want to be when they grow up. And, and journalists, I feel like most of the time, not always, but my BFFs, are like, <laughs> we're still working, we're doing it, it. <laughs> figuring it out. Um, but, but journalists, they have this intrinsic, like quality to want to tell the truth, no matter what, to get the story and, and tell the world. How has it become so, um, dilute? I, I'm not sure what the word I'm looking for is. They're not doing their job. They're, they're being held back. They go to their editor and saying, you know what? This is a story. This is a hot story. Mm -hmm. And then there goes, you know what? We can't because um, Big Pharma owns us. Right. Or how Harvey it, Weinstein how does, owns everything yeah, in how Hollywood. Does journalists or Jeff Bezos, like owning sure. fucking Washington. How do journalists do their jobs and how are they not fighting back more together? I know. It's, it's a great question. I think, you know, everyone wants to retain their job. That's, that's the first thing. It's the same reason why people don't com come forward with harassment to help other people, because they also want to save their, their own job, and they're fearful of retaliation against them. And, you know, before my story and others, that, that was a, a real fear. Um, I hope that's changed a little bit. But, uh, you know, that is exactly why I'm telling you that, that Lifetime and myself believed enough in this story to, to tell it. I know, Some, Lifetime rocks. Other people didn't. Other people yeah. didn't. And, I mean, look at what happened with Ronan Farrow. Exactly. He, he NBC didn't want to do his story. And yep. so he brought it somewhere else, you know. And now he's writing his book, and that'll be a blockbuster because he'll, he'll tell the truth about what happened. I got to ask you about, um, there's, a, there's a movie coming out with Nicole Kidman playing you, right? Yes, yep. 
And there's I a mean, Showtime so miniseries amazing. with her best friend Naomi Watts is playing me in the Showtime miniseries. I mean, how lucky are you that Nicole Kidman <laughs> plays you? Mine would be like, who knows what mine would be? Well, <laughs> is Nicole Kidman the right choice? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, right. you know, speaking of surreal, like, did I ever think in my life that she would hmm. even know what my name was? But um, I, I think it's funny. What I've been saying is that, you know, if there ever is a red carpet, I'll need stilts to go and stand <laughs> next to her. <laughs> I'm real. I'm short. I'm like five, two and a half. And she's really, really tall. Uh, but but, you know, the only thing I hope from these projects is that they're accurate because another problem with signing resolutions and settlements is I can't partake in any of these I was going to say she couldn't come to you and ask you questions, no, correct? No, no. I mean, there's there's obviously so much information out there, and I just hope that you know from the movies. You know, I hope they don't make it too dramatized because— Of course, it's based on a true story, and then all of a sudden, you know— yeah. Yeah, so that's my, that's my, my You're practicing hope. voodoo on the side. <laughs> <laughs> we needed to spice the story up a little bit. Um, did you ever work for Les Moonves? Uh, I did. Uh huh. I worked for CBS for five years. Wow. Did I you did. have a problem with them? Nope. I did the, uh, the CBS weekend morning show. Wow. Uh, and uh, had a great five years there. Uh, loved, you know, I met with him once in person. Uh, didn't have a problem. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Well. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you see people like, you know, there's a few people that come out and defended Harvey, like Lindsay Lohan immediately came out and said, you know, stop bullying him or something like that. And maybe that was about Trump, but she did um, defend Harvey. She did. Right. She did. What do you what do you feel when you see a young actress like that who has influence defend Harvey? Yeah, it's really disappointing. Uh, maybe she's never gone through that kind of behavior before in her life or maybe she has I I don't I don't know I find it, it hard to be believe that she hasn't it could be knee jerk but I right. find it hard to believe that especially an actress has not gone through something that would be inappropriate behavior um but you know look we, we need we need we need women as well as men too because sometimes women are not always um the best to other women in the workplace too so we we need to um we need to make sure that that women are honest about what's really happening too. I, I, I mean, maybe she acted for him in a movie and had a soft spot or something, but I think by now uh, the evidence is pretty, you know, dominant to show what was happening with regard to his actions. Or, or hopefully, or, or, or for her thinking that she could possibly get hired again in maybe. the future and this will blow off. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. I, I don't you know. know. It's disappointing. It is disappointing. But what's not is this special. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. On behalf of uh, women everywhere, thank you for You're speaking welcome. up. I mean, you were going to help generation after generation after this. We we're going to be having a Gretchen Carlson day. <laughs> <laughs> let me know <laughs> Let me know when that is and bring the vodka, okay? <laughs> let me, uh, I got that. Okay. Gretchen Carlson, Breaking the Silence. You guys support her. Watch it. Tell everyone you know. Monday night at 8 o'clock on Lifetime, the new network that is bringing us good television and specials. Gretchen, much love to you and good luck. And please come back anytime. Thanks for having me, Jenny. Thanks, Great Gretchen. Talking to you. It was, Great talking lovely. to you. It was really lovely. We'll be right back, guys. Thank you. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh!